it's going to be hard to top this one. Cameraman's got a bit of Texas about him. <laughs> Alright guys, it's time for another sweet dish. This time we are trying the Dutch apple pie. Now you've probably heard the saying, as American as apple pie. It's because the Americans have taken the apple pie up to a notch. It's almost synonymous with American culture. But actually, the Americans probably have the Dutch and the English to thank for apples in the first place because it was Dutch and British colonialists that took apples over there and started planting them in the area. And so the original apple pie probably comes from the UK, but if you want to talk about a proper apple pie, you talk about a Dutch apple pie, because these guys have basically upped the game and they probably make it the best. And one of the distinctive traits about a Dutch apple pie is basically the top. Instead of using classic sort of pie topping, they have this flaky, crumbly top. And that's basically what gives the Dutch its special, special trait. So, it's served with a little bit of whipped cream, obviously fresh, beautiful apples there, some raisins in there, um, some sultanas. You get a spoon of that into the cream. Oh man. That's taken me to a happy place. That. The actual pastry around this pie, it's very thick in the base of it, but the top somehow has got a little bit of flakiness to it. It's so sort of hearty, substantial, dense. The apples in there have got a little bit of cinnamon on them. It's this lovely, magical, cinnamony taste. It's so delicious. And that whipped cream obviously just gives it that lovely, delicious richness. Oh man, that is exactly what you need. That is exactly what you need. This is so, so good. Very, very good apple pie. It's going to be hard to top this one. Cameraman's got a bit of Texas about him. <laughs> Next up, we're going to be trying some proper Dutch herring. If you want to try Dutch cuisine, this is something you must try. They have this in two forms. They have this in the form of a sandwich, and you can also eat it basically like this, open plate, no bread. And this is the best way of truly tasting the flavor of the fish. So this is basically herring. It's raw, but it's salted for a few months, and it's effectively raw fish with a, it's almost been cured and then it's served up with onions and some pickles we're in Simon and Simon Fischhauser their dad's name is Simon, the son's name is Simon they run this joint when Prinsengracht which is a very popular place here in Amsterdam and you can see behind us we've got a lovely view we've got the canals just behind us the classic Amsterdamian bikes here we are anyway, enough chit chat this is a very traditional Dutch dish this has been going since the 16th century this is a must try when you get here. These guys have been here for 22 years, serving the good people of Amsterdam, this traditional pick. And I love how the toothpick's got the Dutch flag on it. Here we go. Mm. Oh, That is actually delicious. I guess if you like sushi, there's no reason why you shouldn't like this. It's salted not too extremely, it's not overpowering, it's not too strong and I thought there'd be a bit more of a sort of smoky, fishy taste to it but there's not. For some reason it's not got an overpowering pungency to it. It's very very delicate on the palate actually. The biggest taste that you start picking up actually come from the pickle and the onions. That is actually very very tasty. Herring ladies and gentlemen, Dutch style, unbelievable.
And do you want a little bit of sugar on? Yes, please. Yes? Yes, please. Thank you so much. All right, guys, super, super excited for the next food item we're about to try. This is called the Oli Bolin, and this is a very traditional Belgian slash Dutch uh, winter dessert. It's basically a special Dutch donut. The traditional way of having it is they put some sultanas, raisins in the mix, and they sprinkle it with some icing sugar or some caster sugar and there you have it it's very straightforward very simple and meant to be very comforting it's actually very very popular to have in the winter uh, particularly around the new year the lady that we've been speaking to here who owns this place tells us the busiest time of the year is actually on the on the eve of the new year on the 31st of december that's when everyone wants to come here and try this food and i think that dates back to some of the history behind this dish apparently this was enjoyed by the old pagan germanic tribe and they used to eat this dish during the festival of yule which was between the 26th of december to i believe the beginning of the new year so that probably spans from that ancient tradition of the time of year that this dish used to be eaten so it's got very very um, interesting history to it i think another theory as well is it was brought over by by jews who'd have something similar during some of their festivals so look historically rich I'm sure flavor-wise it's going to be equally rich. You can find variations of this dish around the world, all the way up until Indonesia to West Africa. They've got variations of the olive oil, but the original form is right here in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. We're very, very fortunate to be able to try it. So, here we go. Ah, oh, that is unbelievable. Mmm. That is warmth and comfort in a bite. That's what that is. I can see why people like this in the winter when it's a bit cold. This is very, very comforting. It's got like a layer. The exterior is quite obviously sweet because of the sugar. Oh, here we go. Fresh back. Amazing. You can see why the exterior is quite sweet because it's got the sugar on it, but inside it's bouncy and rich and super, super doughy. It's very fluffy, very bouncy. Unbelievably delicious, the only bowling, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Now, the ambition to try proper Dutch cheese has brought us to a toasty joint here in Albert Koop Market. We've been coming here throughout our stay because all the best food stuff you're gonna find in this market. And we've basically stumbled across this toasty place which uses a variety of different cheeses to put together the best toasties. So we've got two different toasties here and the reason we've got these is mainly to try the cheese. We've got Gouda cheese in there and Beemster cheese in there. They are two very typically Dutch cheese product. If you wanna get a taste of Dutch cheese, they're two very good indications. Now, cheese is intertwined with the history there. I've mentioned before, Edam cheese for around 400 years was the most popular cheese and that's because the natural wax that it was made in acted as a way of preserving that cheese and allowed it to be exported around the world before it needed to be refrigerated. So Edam cheese, which was Dutch, was once upon a time one of the most famous cheeses in the world. And everyone knows Gouda cheese, right? We have it in our supermarkets across the UK, across Europe. So anyway, we've got a bit of Gouda and we've got Beemster in this one. Look, beautiful toasty. This is a standard, very, very standard toasty. It's literally just two types of cheese, Gouda and Beemster. And in there as well is Piccalilli. So basically it's a special type of pickle. It's very popular in Amsterdam. They almost call it like a Dutch pickle, but actually the Piccalilli originates in the UK. It was actually a British take on trying to make a South Asian pickle. Um, achar is what they call it in South Asia. So they basically put mustard in it, they put things like cauliflower, gherkin, carrots in it, and they put in a little bit of turmeric. It was their way of trying to make the pickle. It tastes absolutely nothing like the original pickle in South Asia, but it became its own product and it got exported around the world to the extent that you can even find this in Suriname now. So anyway, let's go. Little the pickle lily and two types of cheese. 
Oh my god. That is unbelievable. That cheese is actually so rich. And it's not overly salty. It's quite uh, it's got a nice sort of salt ratio to it. The pickles are unbelievable. Pickles and cheese work so well together because the tangy pickly taste does well to cut across richness of the cheese. So that pickle is delicious. It's an attempt to try and be like a South Asian pickle, but it's very, very British from the onset because of the level of mustard that's there. This one has meat in it, halal option as well. So let's try a bit of this. Astro boiled beef, chestnut mushrooms, and cheese. Let's go. Oh, very meaty, almost barbecue. Sweet mushrooms had a lovely nuttiness. Super, super delicious. Works wonderfully with the cheese. That is outrageous. <laughs>